Hello everyone. <clears throat> In this video, I'm going to be covering the chapter 21 and 22 reactions uh, where I left off last time. And um, these will be the most mechanistically uh, based reactions for the upcoming exam 3 and the final. So um, I'm just going to start by showing the reaction sheet really quickly. And last time when we, f when we stopped, so all this stuff you'll, will not be on your exam. This is chapter 19 stuff, so ignore this. Last time I stopped like right here. Uh, we actually stopped right here, about right here. So um, just some things that you need to know. You need to know uh, the haliform reaction, which is the reaction where we use uh, Br2 and NaOH to... Um, well, what it does, this is actually the formation of uh, what's called... Formation of the haliform this is actually not an important reaction that you need to know, but it's actually demonstrating a concept um, about how to uh, brominate the alpha position on a carbonyl. So this is showing the effect when we use NaOH, a strong base. And essentially, we're going to keep deprotonating and we're going to keep adding a, you know, an, a halide group, which will eventually uh, completely leave. The real reaction that you need to know is actually a reaction where you have, um, if we look at her notes really quickly. Right, these are Bean's notes uh, from the class. And uh, the real reaction that you need to know is this reaction right here, where is it? Um, where it's, we use Br2 and acetic acid. So Br2 and acetic acid is going to brominate the alpha position uh, of the most substituted carbon uh, on the carbonyl. So, you know, we have a uh, carbonyl. Okay, so it's more, substi more substituted on one side. Just general, general understanding of things. This is the alpha position. This is the beta position. So alpha position is one carbon down from the carbonyl carbon, beta is two, okay? This would also be considered a beta position, <laughs> all right, but less important. So um, when we use Br2 and acetic acid, we're, we're trying to uh, brominate the alpha positions of the carbonyls, and so um, the way this works is it eventually forms a double bond and obviously since we're dealing with double bond formation we're interested in the formation of the more substituted one and that would be in this location right here and so therefore you would have a bromine attachment here and you would get back the ketone all right um that, that's something important that you need to know how to utilize we also need to know one other reaction which is the uh valhard uh believe what it's called yes a uh, hell volhard uh, zelinksy reaction which essentially uh we're going to be using um pbr3 and br2 so are you going we're going to be using pbr3 and br2 to um let me just demonstrate all right so it's using carboxylic acids okay so let's say i start with a carboxylic acid and i want to brominate the alpha position all right so i use pbr3 Br2. What this will do, this will both, this is the alpha position that I'm concerned with. It will both it will brominate the carboxylic acid uh, alcohol group and it will also add a bromine at the alpha position. And then to get back the carboxylic acid, let's say I might want in my product a carboxylic acid that uh, has a, alpha, uh, a brominated alpha position. All I have to do is now add H2O, right? Because we discussed how acid acid halides are, you know, usually acid chloride, but acid bromide is also very reactive. I think maybe more reactive, um, or very reactive with 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 anything. And uh, water is a weak nucleophile, and it is strong enough to attack this. And basically, it will attack the carbonyl carbon and give us back an alcohol group, therefore giving us the carboxylic acid. So I now have a carboxylic acid, but this does not change my bromine attachment right here. Okay, so this is the 
first step, this is the second step if I so wish to get this back. If I want this product, then no H2O. Okay, so very important to understand. All right, so now let's keep moving forward uh, quickly. And now we're going to now step into the actual uh, reaction mechanism stuff. So one thing that's very important is this demonstration of, of, of what we have right here. So what we have right here is the, we call the tautomerism, okay? So the tautomerism, that's T-A-U-T, uh, tautomerism. So T-A-U-T-O-M-E-R-I-S-M, tautomerism. And so tautomerism is the conversion between the keto and the enol, enol states of, of the, uh, of this, of this, of this molecule. So, a tautomerism, I believe, is is when you, uh, I think, interchange the bonding of. Uh, let's, let's let's see what the technical def. All right, so here's the technical definition. So, a tautomer, each of two or more isomers of a compound that exist together in equilibrium and are readily interchanged by migration of an atom or a group within the molecule. So that falls in in line with very well with what we have over here. And essentially, it's the hydrogen that is being interchanged. So the hydrogen moves from this alpha carbon and it goes to the oxygen, and we move, uh, you know, this the, the bond down here. And so it's that movement of this single atom, but the overall uh, molecular formula of this molecule stays the same. But the bonding is is, is interchanged, and we have this varying of structure that, that uh, changes in between each other in equilibrium. Okay. So this, this, this uh, tautomerism can be promoted by the introduction of either an acid or a base. There's base promoted, there's an acid catalyzed and there's base catalyzed. Um, a lot of times we use base catalyzed and we don't do the acid catalyzed, but both are, are possible. Um, and essentially, we're going to be using this. We're going to be using the fact that we have this tautomerism, um, and the reason that we can have such a tautomerism is because of the nature of the carbonyl carbon, and the way that it it allows the withdrawing of electron density into the oxygen, and so it's a withdrawing structure. And and this is the same thing applies for all withdrawing structures that are similar to the carbonyl or or have a withdrawing mechanism similar to the carbonyl. Um, and you should know those, and we've discussed them many times, um, that it allows this hydrogen on the alpha position to be acidic. And because it's acidic, it allows it, it can be deprotonated, and we can have this negative charge that results. And this is this negative charge that results that allows us to go from one form to the other, right? There has to be a reason why the mechanism exists, not just simply so that, you know, it can occur. It occurs because of the nature of this of this area. And so we're going to be using this, this concept, the fact that this is a, an acidic hydrogen due to the withdrawing carbonyl, right, able to stabilize this conjugate base here, right? And this is, this is the basically the resonance form of the conjugate base. The conjugate base has a resonance form, and this resonance form is the enolate. Enolate is just the O minus form. Enol is this having a hydrogen right here. So... We're going to be using, manipulating this to do many reactions that you'll see. And so this is the basis of all the mechanism for the, for the coming reactions. So the first thing that we're going to learn is the formation of, you know, the, of a enol or enolate or whatever, this, this keto, keto form. Uh, and we're going to use it to uh, alkylate, alkylate the alpha positions of carbonyls. And so what we have here are a couple of examples, right? So what we have is LDA, okay? This is, uh, we can form LDA by taking isopropyl, uh, diisopropyl amine, right? I think that's, uh, that's what that, that stands for. Yeah, lithium diisopropyl amine. And um, we use butyl lithium on it. We have a negative charge on it now. And so now we have this very strong, a very bulky base. And this is very important, okay? And so the reason why this is very important is that a very strong and very bulky base will, will do two things, right? 
the very strong base will ensure that we are, let's say, give an example. All right. So I just told you LDA is a very strong and bulky base, right? That's what I just said. And so this is very important, okay? And so the reason why this is important is we're going to demonstrate here, all right? So let's say I have a reaction, and, and, and I'm going to just cheat right now and just tell you what the purpose of LDA is, what we use it for, is for alkylating. All right, we don't use it for other stuff. We don't use it for other stuff. So we use LDA for alkylation. And the reason for this is because when I want to alkylate a product, I want 100% of you know, my reagent, I want it all to, in the end, you know, look like this. Let's say this is my desired product. I want to add an R group right here. This is what I want. I don't want a mix. I don't want a few. I want all. And so LDA ensures that we have the the strong base, right? It's going to ensure that the hydrogen that is here, the 100%, so let's say I start in a mixture. This is impossible to do, but I have like, you know, very few. Let's say I have 100, okay? I want, all right, this is the intermediate. I want 100 of the deprotonated version. I want 100 of these. I want all to be in the deprotonated state. Okay? And so LDA will allow us to have that. LDA will also, you know, since it's a bulky strong base, right, it will not interact with the carbonyl carbon, the electrophilic site. So this is an electrophile, right? And so, because it's bulky, this will not easily attack this carbonyl. And so, we will not have side products where we have some of these are, are acts as a base and some of these acts as a nucleophile. So, essentially, LDA is a very good base, but a very bad nucleophile. And so, this will allow us to have only the formation of the, you know, the the keto, the deprotonated keto form or whatever the base that the base that we want. And so now with this base, you know, I can go right, so first step LDA. Second step is what? R RBR right? A primary alkyl halide. It should preferably be primary. Okay? So if I use that here, this will simply do, do like that. And so this is how we, we use this, this, uh, this, this mechanism and, and LDA. So LDA is meant for alkylation. And when we use LDA, we use it only with a certain few functional groups. We use it with ketones, right? Nitriles and esters. So we only use it with these three. And you don't use it with aldehydes, okay? So we need to make sure that it's very clear to everybody, right? So no aldehydes. I don't know why the screen just dragged like that. Oh well. All right. So no aldehydes. And so the reason for no aldehydes is because aldehydes are not bulky. I mean, they are they're very sterically unhindered, and so they will allow the LDA to actually possibly attack and attack the carbonyl carbon and um, and behave as a nucleophile. And so that's why we cannot use aldehydes, right? And um, we can't use other things for, for other reasons, but you need to know that we only use this for esters, ketones, and uh, with, with, uh, with cyanide, with, uh, with the nitrile. So here are some examples that are on the reaction sheet. 
So they show you here this ketone, this is an ester, and they use the nitrile. And so it's always the alpha position on the mo on on the and this is something actually important. So before we talked about it will we'll do most sub, but for this LDA, since it's a bulky, we're always going to do on the least sub side. So for example, if I started with a ketone that looked like this, this is the side that would be alkylated because it's this side is a right is a primary carbon. This side over here is a secondary carbon because it's attached to two other carbons. So the least subcarbon is always the one that gets alkylated whenever we use LDA.